Stephen Curry was caught at a wedding doing the LeBron James challenge, you know, when he's doing all that come through your town or whatever the thing is. Everybody's making a big to do about it, but it's just having fun. It's just in jest. If you guys don't know the history between Stephen Curry and LeBron James, when Stephen Curry won the first championship in Cleveland, next year he came back. He said, I, when his first game back in Cleveland, he said, I hope the locker room still smells like champagne. Everybody was like, whoa, that was a big deal, all right? LeBron wasn't to be outdone as he came back after winning game seven on Warriors floor with Ultimate Warrior shirt coming off the plane. Warriors won. Came back, you know, annihilated them five games. Stephen Curry is doing the uh, LeBron James challenge, you know, <laughs> how, whatever. Everybody's making a big fuss about it, man. At the end of the day, to the victor goes the spoils. We're living in a society today where you can't have any fun. You can't crack jokes on anybody. You know what I'm saying? You can't hurt anybody's feelings. You can't say anything that is detrimental. It's going to hurt their feelings. Everybody gets a trophy. Nobody can have fun. Nobody can clown each other anymore. At the end of the day, Stephen Curry, LeBron James, they are friends. LeBron James went to a bunch of Stephen Curry's Davidson games. LeBron James invited Stephen Curry to his home and they went bowling. There's interviews with Stephen Curry say saying, yeah, we went bowling, we had a good time, etc., etc." You just can't do anything in today's game. Like in today, with the social media, everything is a big deal. Now, although it's appropriate for Stephen Curry to go ahead and clown and have a good time, Stephen, uh, Kyrie Irving was also at the wedding. And everybody is like, no, no, Kyrie, you should have never done that. This is a, another passive-aggressive move to say you went out of Cleveland. And even to that, I say, what is Kyrie supposed to do? First of all, Kyrie has made it clear that he wants nothing to do with Cleveland. He wants to get up out of there. He wants to trade. So therefore, he's no longer LeBron James' teammate. So all that gravitas, everything, all those feelings, they get thrown out the window. If you guys remember when Kobe and Shaq split, they didn't say anything nice about each other the first, I want to say five or six years. If, until Shaq retired, then that's when all the, the good feelings and the heartfelt warmth and the, hey, got to respect that man came out. But before that, call each other bitches, overweight, it was crazy, it was crazy. Kobe snitching on Shaq, talking about maybe if I paid off the girl, I'll be in a different position when he had his rape case. So there's nothing that's off limits. So, you know, Kyrie Irving is having a good time. He's he's laughing, he's cracking, you know, they're cracking jokes. I mean, I don't, this personally, I don't see anything wrong with it due to the simple fact that these guys are all friends. They've all played on Team USA together. They've been to each other's homes. Some of them have the same agents, some of them have the same shoe deals, some of them have the same trainers. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason for there to be any kind of animosity. Look, they had a wedding for Harrison Barnes. Kyrie's at the wedding because he's Duke alumni. Steph's at the wedding because he's his teammate. What 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 kind of animosity do you want, want there to be? Richard Jefferson recently went to a wedding with Andre Iguodala. Iguodala was, was clowning him. So, at, at the end of the day, this is what goes on, ladies and gentlemen. This is not like some huge deal to make a big fuss about. And what's even crazier is what people are like, well, that's Kyrie's teammate. You know, you just got whooped by them, et cetera, et cetera. Richard Jefferson just got whooped by Andre Iguodala. He was standing next to him. He was, he was having a good time clowning each other or whatever. Stephen Curry was clowning Richard Jefferson as well. Like, what do you want these guys to do? Like, this is not the 80s. This is not the 70s. These guys don't hate each other. They're, and I'm going to tell you why they don't hate each other. There's so much money in the league right now. It doesn't make sense to hate because you're you're getting part of the pot. Like even the bums and the scrubs are getting money. Back in the day, 70s, 80s, 90s, when Jordan wasn't even making 30 mil, he only made 30 mil the last two years of his career, these guys were getting paid like 2 million, 700,000. You know, Bill Russell in his one of his books that I read, he said he had signed a contract for a hundred thousand dollars. Now, back in the day, that was considered big money. But then, when you equate that to what they're making paid today, that's peanuts. That's peanuts in a barrel. That's one paycheck for some of these guys. So these guys have no reason to hate each other like everybody wants them to. 
There's a healthy level of competition on the court, but off the court, anything goes. Le LeBron James showed you this when he had the 3-1 lead and the Klay Thompson and Stephen Curry cookies at his Halloween party. But these guys troll each other, man. This is what they do. This is how they have their fun. Now, in terms of Kyrie, I understand where people are coming from, but at the same time, what are we what are we going through right now? Kyrie doesn't want to be there. So Kyrie is not gonna show any empathy for LeBron James. He's not gonna say, wait, 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 come on guys, don't call my boy, man. Come on, man. Cut cut it cut it out, man. Cause if LeBron was there and Steph was, was cutting up on Kyrie, LeBron would be cracking just as much. And I'm gonna tell you how I know this. Back in the day when LeBron James was on the Miami Heat. He saw Stephen Curry in All-Star Weekend, and he said, damn, Steph, you a bad mother effer. You a bad mother effer. And he was basically saying that because everybody remembers that game where LeBron James said that game winning three over Andre Iguodala and Golden State when he was on Miami. He was like, you know, huh, huh, huh. Well, during that game, Stephen Curry hit Mario Chalmers with three hesitation dribbles, had Mario Chalmers spinning around and around and around and around <laughs> like a damn, like a dreidel or whatever. He had him spinning like crazy. And he went to the cup, got the layup or whatever. LeBron James saw Kyrie Irving, I mean, Stephen Curry in the the, um, the hotel. And he was like, damn, you gonna hit my boy with three hezzies? Hey, and you gonna give my point on three hezzies? <laughs> you gonna go here? <laughs> and he was clowning Chalmers. He said, you have my boy spinning around looking stupid. And LeBron was having fun at his teammates' expense. Now, mind you, LeBron won two rings with Mario Chalmers. He was still clowning him. So at the end of the day, if LeBron has the right to clown his own teammate, and Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade were there, and they were laughing just as hard as LeBron was. So it's like, why do... Why do you have to defend? Like, if, if something happened, it happened. If somebody did something, they did something. LeBron does a Le if there's a LeBron James challenge, it's there. Like, Kyrie shouldn't have to defend it and be like, oh, like, let me slide out of this picture. Let me do this. If he's having a good time, he's having a good time. Because right? at the end of the day, if something happened to you and your friend was there and he's, he know you, it was you doing it, he would laugh too. Like, everybody needs to pump their brakes, brakes cool their jets, and just have a good time, man. Like, Guys can't even go at each other like how they're supposed to because everybody's upset that they're trolling each other on the internet. Like, I, I, yeah, let's see some trolling so when they get on the court, we can have a good time and, and we can see what's, what it's going to be because guys going to be like, okay, you was hanging me? Guess what? I'm going to give you on, get on the court. I'm going to give you 30. I'm going to give you 40. I'm going to give you 50. But we can't even do that because people are criticizing the players for doing that. And then, like, another thing is, is like, people want to bring up the fact that Everybody has lost respect for LeBron James. I think we all recognize that LeBron James is basically the best player on the planet, whatever. You know, that's that's the title that they give him. You know, he's earned it rightfully so. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you're the best, people are going to go at you. They're going to come for your head. Like, Jay-Z had a whole bunch of rap beefs. Nas had a whole bunch of rap beefs. 50 said he, he forced himself in the rap beat. He was considered one of the best. Like, when you're the best, people test you. And at the end of the day, LeBron James has not been perfect in his test. Matter of fact, LeBron James is 3-5 and five in his test. So, yes, he's the best player on the planet, but when it comes to getting those chips and having a pristine finals record, etc., etc., or, you know what I'm saying, having the best teams or whatever, LeBron James likes in that. You know, he's had letdowns. So, just because you're the best at something doesn't mean people can't come for you <laughs> like that. That doesn't make any sense. Like people are like, well, nobody would ever troll Michael Jordan. People trolled Michael Jordan, especially on the court. And that's why he proceeded to give you double nickels, 45 point games, 40 point games, 60 point games. That's what Mike did. Do you want to talk smack? He's going to kill you. Ask the Miami players in the Miami Heat. They know. They start running their mouth to Mike. Guess what? Mike puts you in his place. So that's what LeBron has to do. Basically put guys in their place when they get on the court. You know what I'm saying? Which he does for the most part. But it's like when it comes to the finals, his record doesn't it doesn't add up. So it's not like people lost respect for him. It's just that we're getting to a point where LeBron James' career, we're like, you're not Mike. You know what I'm saying? You're a great player. But now people are starting to see the, 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 the chinks in his armor. They're starting to see like, okay, like, 
you need to have all these. You need to have a, a stacked team to win. Like you know, what I'm saying you you want to have three or four. You need want to have three or four stars to win and stuff like that. Like you know, what I'm saying like you 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 hop from team to team to team. Like you know, what I'm saying like so people are starting to see things about him because it's just like. You're the best, but you want us to give you utmost respect. We can we can never joke on you. You can joke on us, like so. That's it's it's like you're trying to turn LeBron into a sympathetic figure, and it's all the media basically because players know what it is. They know like okay, LeBron is a beast. He gonna give you 30, 40 triple doubles. He gonna do what he gonna do. But for some reason, it's like the media wants us to treat LeBron as like he can't be touched. Like anybody can be touched. But it, it's like when you get touched, what are you gonna do afterward? And like with LeBron, it's like when he gets touched, like loses the finals, he'll say something like, "I averaged a triple double. I think I did all." I, you know, so that's his out. That's his out clause. And for players, that's not enough for them anymore. They're not rocking with that. They're like, okay, like you know what I'm saying? Like you want to act like Kyrie didn't hit a, hit a big shot for you to, so you can win the finals. A lot of people talk about that block. Let's just say Andre Iguodala hits the layup. I think Cleveland only uh, the Warriors only go up two, so Kyrie hits, still hits the three. Cleveland still wins the game. Period. So if Kyrie never hits the three, there is no game. There is no ring in Cleveland. So that's what people are just basically saying. Like it's like stop, stop with the nonsense. You know, like this sort of happened with Larry Bird. A lot of players felt like there was a lot of racism going in the league. They were like, well, Larry gets credit for everything. Larry could be on the bench. And they'll say, well, this player made that play. And that's all because of Larry Bird, folks. And Larry's on the bench. And that's kind of the thing that's going on with LeBron. Like, LeBron is so great. We're, all we do is contribute the team's greatness to him. Like, whenever they win, we, we say, oh, yeah, he did his thing and whatever. But whenever they lose, it's always somebody else's fault. It's never his fault. Even, like, when he's saying, I'm average, average triple-double, can't put nothing on me. It's like... No, like you still hold responsibility. You can't say the triple double was enough because apparently it wasn't. Maybe they needed ten more points from you instead of a triple double. Maybe some of those games where you were being passive, they needed to be more aggressive and get people in foul trouble. So it's like just because you average a triple double doesn't mean like you did your necessarily did your job. It's it's a great feat. But look, Russell Westbrook averaged a triple double the entire playoff. The, yeah, the playoffs, because he was in the first round against Harden, and they, they lost on five. So it's like, just because you have a triple-double doesn't necessarily mean you did what you needed to do. It just It's just an incredible feat. It means you're, you're a freak of nature. It means you're, you're great. You have greatness personified. But it doesn't mean that you're exempt from when the team loses. And that's what people are f fatigued about. They're tired of LeBron James being exempt from when the team loses. Every time a team loses, he bolts. You know, Cleveland, he bounced. Miami, when they bounced, when they lost to San Antonio, he bounced. He bounced. That's what he does. And players is just like clowning him for the stuff that he does now. It's like you're you're not beyond reproach. You're, nobody's beyond reproach. You know what I'm saying? It's like people are seeing like you're not the GOAT. So we get to clown on you too. You know, you clown on us, we clown on you. We all at the end of the day, they're all friends. None of them have any bad blood. You could catch LeBron. And Rich Paul and Stephen Curry in a place. You you can catch Kyrie and Stephen Curry, Team USA, chopping it up. You can catch now nah, you can catch Russell Westbrook and and Kevin Durant talking. They squash they beef. Like there's no more beefs in the NBA. Let it go. Curry cracking on LeBron's all in jest. Kyrie cracking on LeBron was in jest, but it had a little extra meaning behind it. Little dig. That's what it is. Like that's what this, this is the closest we're gonna get to any kind of bad blood because you know and and back in the days what happened you come in that lane you get clothesline you know what i'm saying fist fights that's that's what I'm, I'm waiting to see but we'll never see that so let us enjoy this not let's not critique this let's not make this a big deal this is black who's who's me hoopla peace